Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for a continuation of my last video. I recently was talking about uh, how I make choices when it comes to choosing a fabric for a project or choosing a project in a style for a fabric I may already have in my stash. But I, like I was saying last time, I really only have a handful of fabrics that I just consistently use over and over again. Uh, I kind of have my fabrics that I like for structured things and I have my fabrics that I like for like more flowy projects and I don't stray from the like few selections of each much in my work. So today in the grand tradition of like YouTube of old I have an almost listicle sort of situation for you going through my favorite fabrics. Starting with of course my number one favorite that I talk about all the darn time, cotton sateen. And here is a cotton sateen. This one is, I know, shockingly from mood as you can see. Um, it's a cotton and elastin, 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 whatever it is called, blend here. So you can see a little bit of stretch it has, but it's got a subtle sheen to it. This one's a quite a medium weight, I would say. It's neither too heavy. Um, it's heavy enough to make a skirt or a dress out of, but it's not um, too heavy to be irritating in most design details. You could do a lot with this sateen. You don't have to worry about gathering it. It wouldn't be too bad. It is going to be a little bit too thick for some designs, but it's a nice medium weight, this one, for like structured designs. I really like the sateens from Mood like this. They have a lot of really awesome prints that they offer in this. This actually is one of my favorite prints ever. I made this A-line skirt dress out of it. So you can see what this looks like as an A-line dress. And here's a little bit of information about sateen. These summaries today are actually just from me. So uh, excuse me typos, I apologize. Um, usually found in a mid-weight, cotton sateens have a subtle sheen due to the satin weave structure. Also available in different weights and levels of shine, cotton sateens often feature fun prints in addition to solids that are great for basics, especially for like circle skirts, any skirts actually. Um, so they're best for skirts of all silhouettes, I think. Um, and also any like clean cut dresses I say here because it is too thick again for some kinds of details. A lot of, like if you ga do anything gathered or anything like this, it will puff up because it has more structure. So you just have to keep that in mind. Anything where you want gathers to lay softly against the body, the sateen's not going to work for that because it's going to have a lot of body and crispness to it and will hold out any design details or kind of puff up if you put gathering into it. Um, and then also jackets and more structured garments and suiting will also work out of sateen as well. So here are just some different garments that I have made out of sateen over the years. You've seen me use it here on the channel all the time, so you've probably seen plenty of cotton sateen, but these are different projects that I've made out of it over the years. Slim skirted dresses, A-lines, uh, and circle skirts, I think, all work out of cotton sateen. Then next on my list of favorite fabrics to work with is going to be cotton voile. I also do quite like cotton lawn, which I don't see that much of a difference between lawn and voile. I use them quite interchangeably. Lawn is more structured than say a rayon chalet, but has less body than a cotton poplin and is usually a bit sheer or translucent. And I would say the same of voile. They're both on the sheerer side um, or more translucent side. If I want something more opaque, I will usually go for a poplin, which is a similar feel, but a bit, little bit thicker. Um, and both of these are best for lightweight tops and dresses and like peasanty or floaty blouses and then also for interlining or for use as bias hem tape. Um, you see me use bias to hem things all the time here on the channel and I often like to uh, cut bias tape out of a voile or a lawn that I have sitting around just because it's such a nice weight um, that it never weighs anything down. It's never going to be heavier than the whatever I'm making. So it's nice if you're going to use bias to hem like that for it either to be the same weight or lighter weight than whatever you are hemming. So I use voile and lawn both for that quite often. And here are again a couple of garments that I have made with wall or lawn over the years. Next up we have a cotton twill here. It's a nice hardy cotton twill. I've made many things out of cotton twill in my sewing journey, but also here on the channel I think I've made a few things out of cotton twill before, including this Renaissance inspired ensemble. Um, and you've seen a couple of these appear on the channel and I've done a couple of them in cotton twill. But cotton twill is like a hardier, heavier fabric. It's usually on the heavier side, but also can be found in lighter weights. Twill is a common weave with many variations, even within cotton. Denim, for example, is a cotton twill. Twill has a diagonal ribbed texture up close, can be found with or without stretch, and all twill weaves are on the crisper side with a more structural drape. And as I've said, said here, not floopy. It's, it's much more of a structured fabric and even when it's thin, it has a serious crispness to it. It's more on the taffeta side of fabric where it has, like it holds an edge well, it holds a pressing well. And it's best for structured garments like jackets, uh, suiting slimmer skirts and simply cut dresses. I always say simply cut dresses, I mean like things like this where it's just like an A-line, that would work also in a cotton twill. Um, and I make a lot of like hardy safari ready skirts out of cotton twill over the uh, ages here. And also suits like these ones. You see me make these little like two-piece dresses or little summer suits out of cotton twill here on the channel. And I wear them all the time during the summertime. And then of course we have rayon crepe. 
of which I will show you a couple here. Um, this is a very, very floopy, lightweight rayon crepe. This one is from Joann's. It's I would say this is not the lightest weight of crepe I've ever felt, um, but this is actually, it's kind of annoying to work with how light this one is. It is a little bit one of those ones where it's really shifty on you and not the most fun to work with this particular crepe, but other crepes like this one are fine to work with and are much feel much more like a silk crepe and have a bit more weight to them and feel closer to the vintage crepes that I've felt out and about um, when browsing vintage clothing. That's a good way to know like how like what the weight of fabric was used at the time is if you go to vintage shops and even if you don't come home with anything, which I rarely do because vintage is often too small for me, but it's nice to feel the actual fabrics that they used at the time so you can get an idea of what the weights of crepes, for example, that they were using in the 1940s were like. But rayon crepe comes in a variety of weights, as you can see, from lightweight and translucent to heavier or bottom weight crepes. I've seen uh, bottom weight suiting crepes from Mood. For The texture is often described as pebbled, but they kind of mean more of like a smooth sand sort of texture. It's not pebbled rough. Usually I felt a couple of crepes maybe that were like uh, to the point of where I was like, oh, that's almost a rough texture, but usually it feels quite smooth. It just looks a bit pebbly if you were to zoom in real close. And crepe is best for draped dresses and blouses, things that have uh, like swags or gathered sections. This falls into gathers very well. It's the right amount of floopy, as I say, uh, my new work fabric descriptor, floopy, that hopefully we can all get on board with. Um, so crepe is really good for dresses like these that I'm showing you here now that I think I've used it on the channel before. I'm not sure. I know I've made things on Patreon with crepe before, so I'll, I might be, I may be showing some projects here that you haven't seen before, but that's probably because they were Patreon exclusive projects. Sorry about that. And then another rayon fabric that I use relatively often is Shally. Um, this is Shallis, but it's pronounced Shally, I believe. And usually it's a very lightweight with a matte finish plain weave and floopy drape. Shally is often used in modern clothing for blouses and dresses. You'll find it at like H&M and Target all the time. Uh, that's usually what the rayon and viscose is they're using at those places is usually a chalet like this one. It has an airy fluid drape and is often translucent in lighter colors especially. And it has a bit more of a casual look compared to crepe in my opinion. And sometimes like the cheaper chalets can almost have like a brushed or flannel like appearance to them. They have almost a like a softer pre-worn in look to them when you're dealing with I guess less expensive chalets. But again, this is a very floopy, lightweight, drapeable textile. It's best for draped dresses and blouses um, and can work in gathers and detailing, no problem. And then here are some different wool suitings. So you can see the variety of wools that they put under that category name. So I have this very lightweight, smooth, plain weave suiting. I have some like tweed looking fabric here. So it's it kind of does run the gamut in this uh, category that they're calling wool suiting, especially on um, fabric retailers usually will have a section that's like wool suiting. And that can be not one textile, but a category referring to wool fiber materials made in a weight suitable for suiting applications. They can be thin, crisp plain weaves, brushed twills, blended gabardines, or thicker tweeds. Sometimes they will even include wool coating in wool suiting. So you really have to look out for that because the thicker the fabric, the more simple your design is going to have to be. It'll work for like a pencil skirt, or like a swing coat, but it won't work for anything draped. Whereas these super thin ones will work no problem in like a draped 1940s style dress. Um, but these are best for suiting, of course, hence the name, um, and also dresses, skirts, and trousers. And then of course, this will also work for coats. You just don't see me make a lot of coats. So I'm not usually thinking about fabrics for them. But I have of course made several things out of wool suiting over the uh, years. Usually you have to line things made out of wool, of course, so that it doesn't add an extra um, element of expense and also time to projects made out of things like this, but it is definitely worth it because there can be a lot of really nice wool suiting fabrics out there and I do enjoy using them. Other honorable mentions here at the end that I do use from time to time include rayon twill. Um, again, that's the same twill weave with that sort of diagonal ribbed structure to it. Um, and it can be lightweight like chalet or a little bit sturdier and it works well for 1940s dresses. This black dress of mine actually that you saw recently in my um, little fun hat video. This dress is actually a rayon twill that I bought at a fabric store in person. Wild. I usually do buy fabric online as we know. And I have another rayon twill here in my stash. This is another black rayon twill. It has a slight sheen to it and is very nice. And this one, sh shockingly, I know, this was from moodfabrics.com. And again, another fabric I've mentioned a little bit is cotton poplin. I just used it to make that bug stress that you saw recently here on the channel. Um, it's kind of what classic button down shirts are usually made out of. Um, it's a shirting kind of weight of cotton. It's usually heavier than of wall or lawn, but not as heavy as most quilting cotton or sateens. It's smoother and like feels cooler to the touch than quiltings um, as well. So it almost feels a little bit more sateen like, but it's light, light, lightweight and doesn't have a satin weave. So um, just, Kind of an in-between fabric that is nice and opaque and still lightweight enough to do lots of design details with 
and of course a cotton, so it's fully washable, which I always like as well. And then I've recently started using this cotton pique from moodfabrics.com that I decided to give a try, and I really like it. I don't think all cotton piques are like this. I think like polo shirts are actually cotton pique, and like that would be much too soft for most things I make, but this one here I will link to in the description. This cotton pique is a thicker, it almost feels like a cotton twill, but like with a different weave pattern, of course, a pique weave instead of a twill, um, but it's thicker, like hardier, like a cotton twill almost feels like, but it does have stretch in it, this one, and I made a 1950s, like very basic 1950s dress in black out of this, and it's now like my favorite dress. I love that dress so much. So I have a couple more colors of this exact fabric in my stash and I can't wait to make more basic 1950s dresses out of them because we all know how I love accessories. So having so having a great basic dress that I can style many ways um, in a hardier fabric like this is something I really like having in my wardrobe. I do also like linen and linen blends. I just don't often find myself reaching for them, funny enough. Um, I like linen and ran blends, especially for trousers like these black uh, trousers I made last year, or also wrap dresses like this red wrap dress is um, a linen round blend from Joann's actually, and I've used this exact fabric from Joann's a couple of times and did a couple of different projects before in my years of sewing, and I do really quite liking uh, like working with it. So I think of linen as a more casual or summery fabric, and we all know I don't sew a ton of casual things. And then lastly, I do have to mention polyester brocades. Um, polyester, we all know. I'm not a huge fan, but brocades I am a huge fan, and silk brocades and jacquards are usually extremely pricey and like rare to even get a hold of, so polyester brocades will usually have to do if I'm doing something, I don't know, that requires a brocade for whatever reason. If I want to make something fancy, like even that yellow taffeta um, outfit from last year for the Have a Buff Look book, that is not a um, brocade, but it is a like jacquarded taffeta almost, and that was polyester because I never would have been able to find fabric quite like that in not a poly, unfortunately. Um, sometimes you see things and even they're so good that even I will break for a polyester. Um, and that is how I feel about this brocade, for example, which I just think is amazing and I can't wait to make a dress out of it. I hope this video was helpful in illuminating why I make some of the choices that I do here in my sewing room. Feel free to, of course, leave me what your favorite fabrics or most used fabrics are in the comments below. Are there any fabrics you think I should give a try that you haven't seen me use yet? Um, some things are just too slippery and annoying, and I just don't like to torture myself like that. I kind of refuse. Thank you, as always, for watching today, and I'll be back here with more sewing and vintage fashion real soon. Bye!